Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. I know I haven't posted in a while. I did that on purpose because if you've been living under a rock, you know this is not a really good time right now, especially for my black community. So I just didn't feel right to post. I wanted to use my platform to educate people and to um, leave things that resonate with people. I also wanted this to like start a conversation that I think should have been started God knows how long, like so many years. It should have been started years ago. And for people to kind of like understand what the black community is going through and how you can help, etc. For people that follow me on social media, I've been talking a lot on my Facebook, on my Instagram, etc. So, you know, I was like, you know what, let me do YouTube because I know a couple of people have had questions for me because I've been posting a lot, I've been going out to protest, etc. So, you know, I felt like it was my duty to like let me correct myself. It's not my duty. Let me let me get let me get one thing straight because I keep having to correct myself. It's not my duty. It's not my job for me to edu be educating you guys. The black community has suffered enough. We don't owe anyone ish right now. It's not our job. Right? So don't expect every black person to come and educate you because of who I am and who what I stand for. It's that's just who I am. I am willing to use my platform to educate people on it and to talk about it and to start these conversations. I ask people to ask me questions on BLM, aka Black Lives Matter. I ask people to ask me questions, statements, just anything revolving around the situation with George Floyd and um, anything to do with racism in general against the black community and you know all those kind of like stuff like that so yeah um, obviously I am filming my YouTube video on my phone so um, I took screenshots of all the questions I got from snapchat and Instagram so if I keep looking down is because all my information is on my laptop so yeah let's get into the questions so the first question I got was what made you start speaking up on this issue for people that know me for people that have been my friend or have known me for a long time like me speaking up about racism is nothing new like this is just who i am i have been speaking about it for years probably since maybe since i was like 17 18 i think i started like really speaking up about it because obviously i'm a black woman like this is affecting me this is affecting my community i've had so many serious experiences that i think need to be shared i understand what's going on because i've lived it like i haven't lived it to this full potential but i've lived it because i'm a black woman this is my reality this is a reality for a lot of black people i don't think people understand like i said in the beginning as well like it's not our job as a community to be educating you guys that's a privilege for a black person like me to be giving you everything you need to educate yourself on is a privilege so when your black friends are trying to talk to you about things that are going on in their life because they're black please listen because it's a privilege for them to even tell you in the first place because they don't owe you anything as a non-black person with me i just wanted to share i wanted to educate people like that's just who i am i love to learn and i love to educate people so i love to do both roles at the same time the, the reason why i'm speaking about it more than ever right now is because i feel like at my age now i'm 21 i know a lot more than when i used to speak out on it because if i'm being honest yeah there are some things in my knowledge that were very missing back when i was 18 19 etc and like i just there were a lot of times where people did be like oh no that fact is wrong that is wrong that is wrong and like now that i'm 21 and i have spent time to understand everything like that's why i want to share what i know and what i understand about my struggles and the struggles of the black community in general so the next question is what is your view about how the media portray the protests so for people that don't know um last week i went to two black lives matter protests in central london it was really really good it was really really good to get out there and to get your voice heard and to be part of this revolution because this is going to be history this is actually going to be history i don't think people are realizing this because for the first time in so long black people's voices are finally being heard so this is the time to speak out and to go and get your voice heard and to do the most when it comes to helping black lives and getting the rights that the black community deserve so when it comes to the media portraying protests yeah 
not gonna lie british media if you know british media is rubbish when i tell you it's rubbish i can't stand british media they love to turn things in such a horrible image for no reason it's caused so many lives it's caused so many careers etc sometimes it's for good reason but most time it's for the most horrible reason and they do this a lot with the protests they're trying to make the black community and the black lives matter movement horrible when it isn't let me get an example yeah so Everyone on social media and everyone on the media has seen that infamous video of people throwing things at the police horses and people throwing stuff at like the police in general, blah, 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 blah. That is bad. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. That's horrible. But you have to understand that was a one minute clip that you saw from from BBC or whatever. Generally, these protests last about six, seven hours, five hours minimum, right? So you're really going to judge a one minute clip that's been posted by the media solely to make the Black Lives Matter look bad. Anyone that's been to the protests know that the protests in London have been incredibly peaceful. The only reason why it gets out of hand is because stupid people stay behind and start causing a mess that's their own and that's a small small percentage of people that went to the protest if you know the protests were like tens of thousands of people maybe even hundreds of thousands of people the people that were doing that was maybe a good five six hundred maybe thousand at most that's like a small percentage of people that went to the protest you cannot judge a small clip or a small tiny moment of the whole protest to judge the protests in general also on another hand as well, yeah. Number one, if you know history, yeah, undercover cops is nothing new. I'm not sure if they do in the UK. That's something I'm gonna need to research myself, yeah. In America, yeah, undercover cops are nothing new. It's happened in the 1960s, it's happening now. What they'll do is that they'll purposely break windows, they'll destroy things to make it seem as though that it was the Black Lives Matter movement that did it, so that it makes them look bad into the media. So I'm not sure if it happens in the UK. Someone, like, comment if if it does happen in the uk and i'm not sure if it doesn't i'm not sure but most time it's the police that start the violence because from what i've heard from my friends that stay behind half of the police officers were causing violence for no reason like you need to understand the bigger picture unless you go to the protest you don't understand what's happening there that's why i find it funny when people judge all these protests without even going right go like if if you feel such type of way and you want to know what's going on and you want to have your voice heard go to the protest then you can have your judge about it because at the end of the day yeah you don't know nothing if you haven't been you don't know what's going on you don't know how the at atmosphere is like for people that went you know that the atmosphere was amazing they were playing tupac they were playing stormzy they were even playing candy like please like it was such good vibes people had drums people had tambourines people were just singing funny chants like it was it was a good it was a good atmosphere so please don't judge it all based on that also you need to understand yeah half the people that do it are non-black people and ha and most time they don't even do it for the cause that they want to do it they're just doing it because they feel like they're entitled to do all that because they're at a protest yeah if it's the black community i would understand because like to be honest yeah the black community has every right to be angry if you know history yeah the black community has every damn right to be angry right but if it's a non-black person i don't get why they're doing that because you're not angry like you're just being stupid it just makes no sense hey it's just from the future um i was looking over the video and realized there's a very important point that i missed out I also just like to add as well that in general riots and protests are the reason why a lot of us have basic rights today the suffragettes and suffragists didn't just you know be like can we have rights they had to have protests they had to have riots they had to do the most in order to get the rights they needed same with the civil rights movement same with freeing slaves etc there are so many riots and protests that were very important in history in order to give people basic rights why do you think that black people are just going to be like hi can we have basic rights it ha that hasn't worked for years that concept hasn't worked for years you need to understand that riots and protests are needed in order for justice to be served but yeah honestly just do your research when it comes to these riots when it comes to these protests as well they're just very significant into the way we live today without them we'd still have slaves women still wouldn't have rights just think about it if you want to understand protests especially the ones that happen in london i would say go to one maybe obviously be safe you know if you need tips on going to protests just like you know text me whatever but like 
honestly truly if you want to understand what's going on i would say go out to the streets and look at it yourself so next question is first experience of racism towards you or anyone else so this is good that someone asked me this question because i was gonna move on to that point anyways four years old was the first time i ever experienced racism i didn't even realize i was experiencing racism because obviously i was four years old i'll explain to you like why I experienced that at such a young age. For people that watched my previous video, you'd know that um, I lived in Holland for five years, from the age of four till the age of nine. And for people that know the Netherlands and for people that watched my previous video, there's a holiday called Sinterklaas, which is a racist holiday that celebrates blackface and making fun of black features. This holiday was always on my birthday. So, you know, when I was four and I first moved there, that's when I first experienced racism because, you know, I walked into class one day and all the white kids were doing blackface and I asked the teacher why I didn't need to paint my face. And they said, quote unquote, I'm already dark as it is. That was the first time I proper experienced racism. It really did start like lowering my self-esteem and I didn't know why. You know, I'm like, why am I too dark as well? Like also generally I saw a post as well, like where someone was like racism kind of started at a young age when, you know, the, that crayon that's like light and supposed to represent like white skin color is seen as the main skin color. And that's where the problem started. And now that I deep it, yeah, I remember, you know, back in the day when I was like in year two, year one, and like we were drawing pictures and stuff like that. And you know, people were asking, oh, can you, um, Jess, can you pass me the skin color or something like, like the skin color coloring pencil? And like, you know, I used to look at it and be like, why is my skin not main skin color? Like I always used to feel like something was wrong with me because like you know i'm not the superior skin color um obviously the most traumatic in my opinion was the holiday because i had to live through that with my whole childhood i was gaslighted um i was said that it wasn't even to do with race um it was just to do with the suits from the chimney i was gaslighted for so long um i didn't understand that it was so horrible until i grew up and i moved out of that country so yeah that's kind of like my experiences but to be honest yeah that's only the tip of the iceberg if i have so many so so many experiences with racism honestly it would take like forever for me to film every single one i've had next question is how do you answer people who don't get or believe in systemic racism what facts can we use to back our points i'm going to try my best to get to the point with everything but yeah so first thing yeah is that you need to first kind of understand this person in general are they willing to listen to you are they willing to listen to what you have to say analyze how the person is is talking about it how their approach is etc because if they're not willing to listen to you like there sometimes there actually is no point you can educate and educate and talk and talk and talk but if they're not going to listen what's the point is that you, you might as well just be talking to a brick wall like trust me is hard because i've had my times where i'm incredibly angry and like i'm trying to explain my point to this person and they're just not listening but sometimes it's just a matter of you know just be like forget it i'm not gonna roll with you or i'm gonna block you or i'm just gonna, I'm gonna follow you because i'm not trying to deal with that and that's what i've been doing because quite frankly yeah i'm not trying to argue with people that are not willing to listen like if you're willing to listen i'll educate i'll tell you where you're going wrong and this that and the other and facts all this etc but if you're not willing to listen yeah i'm not gonna waste my time like this is my community we're talking about my community is suffering i don't have the time to be dealing with people that are not going to listen to me and listen to my voice and let my voice be heard because like what's the point so that's the first thing i would suggest yeah i'm gonna list a couple of facts so let me just get them in a second for people that don't know what systemic racism is it's racism that's been placed into the system or created kind of like a system culture based upon racism particularly against black people. That's not the official definition, that's just kind of like my explanation, but um, I'll probably put the definition here somewhere, like somewhere here. But like, yeah, so that's kind of like a quick, quick, quick summary of what systemic racism is. Also, I made this mistake so often, I only realized this today, systematic and systemic are two different words. I didn't know this because sometimes I'm dumb, but yeah. So if you're talking about racism placed in the system, say systemic racism not systematic systematic is to do with patterns and actions systemic is to do with the implementation into the main system you get it i'm going to say a couple of, like statistics that you can use that might be helpful for the person to understand right okay when it comes to employment yeah black unemployment rates have been consistently two times higher than of whites for the past 60 years applicants with white sounding names get called back 50 times more than people with black names even with identical resumes 
black with college degrees are two times more likely to be unemployed. So literally black people can work 10 times harder and still might not get the job because of the color of their skin. So when it comes to education in schools, black students are three times more likely to be suspended than white students for similar infractions. If two students are, for example, coloring on the walls and one of them is white and one of them is black, the white person is more likely to be let off than the black kid because of white privilege. Once black children are in the criminal justice system, they are 18 times more likely to be tried as an adult than white kids. So for people that don't know Central Park Five, they are a group of black teenage boys that were tried and they were sentenced to loads of years in prison for a crime they did not do. And one of them, who was only 16, was tried and sentenced as an adult. For people that want to find out more information about the Central Park Five, there is a Netflix four-part show called When They See Us. Really good, highly recommend. It's also very emotional, so I will warn you. Black drivers are 30% more likely than whites to be pulled over by the police. More than half of young black Americans know someone, including themselves, who have been harassed by the police. So obviously you can see with the George Floyd case, yeah, he was practically killed. Whereas if it was a white person, they would either be arrested or maybe even let off. A lot of people in my community, particularly black men and black boys, can relate to the fact that when we were young, we had the talk on what to do when we're pulled over by the police officer because we're not scared to get arrested. We're scared to get killed, as you can see with George Floyd. Police brutality within the black community has risen, not only in the US, but in the UK. It's been a serious issue that's been embedded for a long time. So that's why when it comes to George Floyd, George Floyd is not the only case. This is just a case that's been like enough is enough because it's gone on for too long. It's gone on for way, way too long. Even in times of segregation, even in times of slavery, etc., police brutality has become a serious issue. And as you can tell, those are the facts that prove it. White families hold 90% of natural wealth. Black families hold 2.6% of it. And for every $100 earned by white families, black families earn $57.30. 60% of doctors have unconscious racial biases. Black Americans are far more likely than whites to lack accesses to emergency medical care. Black mothers are four times more likely to die from pregnancy complications. There are a couple other facts. Um, I can put them on the screen here for a bit. Also, I would just also like to add, when you're using statistics and facts, don't just use statistics straight off the bat. Get into the history, learn more into the history, understand those numbers as they are in, in the lines with history, because you can't just use numbers and just don't understand it. Because sometimes, yeah, statistics and history don't align together depending on the situation. Um, I'll insert a video here so that kind of explains a little bit more of that. A few things for you guys who think you know everything just because you looked up a few statistics on Google. One, if you've learned anything about history, you know what a ghetto is, okay? A ghetto is basically when you force a group of people into a small area, the idea is that they will kill each other, okay? And since early on, black people were denied jobs and were set back so far that they couldn't gain generational wealth, generations of black folks have been continuously forced into ghettos. And then these ghettos are over-policed so that when they take all the data and, you know, make these statistics that you like to look up so much, it looks like black people are just inherently more violent, okay? It's like that by design. Just because you can look up statistics to support your agenda on Google does not make you intelligent. Okay, moving on. Would love to know how to be the best ally possible without inserting myself unnecessarily and being able to understand and converse about people of color's experiences without white explaining or giving my opinion when it's not helpful. Okay, that's a good question. I'm glad someone asked it. So I'll say my tip is, is to first sit down with your black friends or black people you know, maybe in your neighborhood, something like that. If you know a black person in your life or like I'm, the reason why I'm particularly talking about black people because this is a black issue. Like I'm talking about black issues. With pe other people of color, that's it depends on what they want. But this is a black issue right now. If you know a black person in your life, yeah, the best thing to do is not speak. Listen to them first. Understand what they're saying. Make sure that their voices are heard because the aim of this whole movement is to make black people's voices heard. White people's voices are already heard. But what you're doing is, I think my friend Aaron explained it really, really well. He's really good at explaining things like this, yeah? 
you're trying to be a megaphone for black voices not a microphone you are using your privilege to voice out black voices but you're not trying to be that black voice you get me so you need to listen and understand what the black people in your life are trying to say make sure that you have these conversations with them and don't make it all about you you need to sit down and you need to let them talk and explain everything if they're feeling comfortable with talking about their personal experiences with racism then let them but don't pressure them into anything they don't want to because at the end of the day they don't owe you anything so it's a privilege that they're even talking to you about it in the first place but you have to also sit down and be willing to listen to them if they want to talk another thing you should do is to take time to educate learn facts do research blah 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 and for people saying oh that's long that's like a school paper i saw a sign and it explains it very well so if you're out here doing the most stalking your man's ex-girlfriend about her life and the previous relationships etc i'm telling you sweetie you have the time to go and do your research about racism sign petitions sign as much as you can obviously read it first read the petitions first and sign them obviously also do some donations i would say also send out a lot of emails if you're in the uk send out emails to your local mp if you're from america send out emails to the white house to the police police department etc but i'll also add a link down below and i'll show you how to use it on the screen right now but it has loads of resources it has resources to educate yourself resources to uh, also has resources to educate your family your friends it also has resources to donate to sign petitions to send out emails email drafts making emails for you it's so helpful so i would start off with that website alone because that whole website is a guide to how you can help especially if you're a non-black person right then if you can if you really can because i really encourage you to go go to these protests because obviously as much as we want to sit here and we want to sign petitions and we want to donate and etc at the end of the day when it came to the civil rights movement and abolishing slavery we did it by going to the streets we went to the streets to the streets so if you can go to the streets however i will say that at the end of the day this is a black lives matter movement if you're a non-black person don't make it about you when it comes to these protests however if you're a non-black person don't make this about you because at the end of the day this is about black lives this is about protecting black lives this is about giving rights to black people and the black community this is making sure that the genocide of black people ends now if that makes sense so don't make this about you make this about the black lives so here's another question i got when you protest what makes you want to start the chance the introvert in me could never <laughs> uh felt that so for people that don't know um i'm gonna insert some videos here Please. no justice no, peace. no I, I did a little, uh, a little something and I started a couple a couple chants in the in the protest because uh, it's the activism in me that just that just compelled me to do so trust me it was it was very very scary I have social anxiety like I was scared I was gonna have a panic attack halfway through like honestly truly um, it was very very scary so I get it um, God made me into an activist so like it's just the activism in me that compelled me to do those chants in general going to these protests it was not it was not easy for me to go out like even in the previous question I said go out to the streets if you can because I'm telling you now it's not easy like especially in the pandemic we're living on right now like it was very like I was taking so many risks risk for my mental health risk for my physical health and risk in general of anything that could happen because I'm black I could be arrested I could have police brutality put against me but I just knew this was something i needed to do because at the end of the day yeah when when you die people are not going to remember the job that you went to people are going to remember what mark you left i want to be part of the change when it comes to changing the lives for my future kids and my future grandkids i want my future grandkids and my kids to live a better life than i'm living right now i want them to not feel the racism that i felt to have the experience that i experienced so obviously i want to be part of that change so that's why i felt compelled to you know lead chants and go to protests etc can black people be racist towards white people Whew. i knew this question was coming i just i don't know why but i felt this question was coming okay personally i feel like this is the most biggest argument going on around right now but i'm just gonna keep it short and simple for the first couple words 
No. The same person also asked, is there a difference between racism and prejudice? Good thing is that that question leads on to the question about can black people be racist to white people? So let me break it down for you. There's prejudice and there is racism, okay? The difference between the two in quick summary is that prejudice is a general term for being discriminative, discriminative towards a group of people. Racism is prejudice with power when it comes to race. That's just the first couple of things that you need to understand before moving forward. Racism, right, you can look at the definition and it'll be like, oh yeah, you know, like discriminatory towards another group of people of a particular race, right? But it's much more than a dictionary definition. You need to understand where racism came from. You need to understand history. That's why I've said before, when you're educating yourself, you can't just use statistics and numbers and definitions. You have to also look into history and align them together because sometimes it's not always black and white. You need to understand that there are so many much more to it so when it comes to black people being racist to white people we cannot be racist because of the history and the power that we don't have right I, I do understand that the Irish community were oppressed but they were not oppressed for their race you need to understand that because I've had a lot of people use that argument when it comes to yeah but white people were also oppressed you know there was the Irish community you know there was the Irish community that was oppressed and blah 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 right you need to remember that's xenophobia that's not racism xenophobia is discrimination towards a group of people of a certain country or a certain area right that's not racism Irish people were not oppressed because they were white. They were oppressed because they were Irish. You cannot base the facts that white people were oppressed on that because they were not oppressed for their race. That's one thing, okay? Another thing, like I said, in general, in order for racism to have an impact, it would need power. Black people and any other person of color, whether it's Asian or Latina or um, Native American or etc they cannot be racist towards white people because they do not have enough power to do so right let me explain why when it comes to history of white people they have been they've had the power enough to colonize to cause segregation etc they've always had that white supremacy to be racist towards black people asian people native americans latino etc right black people have never had that power to do that to white people same as latino people same as asian people etc because of systemic racism we do not have power to be racist towards white people we can be prejudiced and we can be discriminative and we can be xenophobic that makes sense yeah but when it comes to being racist in general we do not have that power because in order to be racist you need to have prejudice discrimination and power but i can admit we can be prejudiced and discriminative towards white people and i've called out people who have done that including myself sometimes because sometimes you can't just be doing that right it's not fair but you can't call that racism that's prejudice and discrimination and in certain sense and in certain like situations it's xenophobia right but however when it comes to black people being racist towards other people of color races yes we can we can definitely be racist toward them because they've been oppressed they have had that racism not the same racism don't get it twisted it's not the same racist is racist experiences but we can be racist towards the Asian community and the Latino community, etc. Black people, you can also be racist towards other people of color, but black people and other um, people of color groups cannot be racist towards white people because white people have always had the power and the white supremacy to be racist towards us, but we don't have that. Like we don't have that white supremacy because we are people of color, particularly we are black. The website that I talked about has a lot more information about reverse racism, etc. because reverse racism is not a thing. Let me tell you now, reverse racism is not a thing. Repeat after me. Reverse racism is not a thing. Good. Why are black women slash girls portrayed as aggressive? So this took me a long time to kind of like understand because, you know, people are always very racist towards me and be like, oh, she's so aggressive. She's so ghetto. She's so this, that, and the other, right? Let me explain to you now, right? It's a combination between both racism and sexism, okay? When it comes to the ideal woman in a man's eyes, they are very submissive. They're very quiet. They don't speak, etc., right? If you take data back to history when it comes to the black people, yeah, we had to speak out. Like, a lot of us had to speak up especially black women now when it came to the new stereotypical racist trope of black women being aggressive and quote-unquote ghetto yeah it's because of that kind of nature we had to have in order to survive as a black community and because we're women and we're not the ideal picture of a woman being submissive to men yeah it created this narrative that all black women 
are aggressive and this, that, and the other. And then when that occurred, when that whole image of black women occurred, media and pop culture ran with it. You know, that was TV shows, reality shows, etc. They love to paint black women being this, that, and the other. So that's why there's that stereotype when it comes to black women. And let me tell y'all now, calling a black woman aggressive and ghetto is probably the worst thing you can do. It's as bad as calling us the N-word. Don't do it. It's wrong. It's wrong. Stop calling black women aggressive. Black women are beautiful, amazing, spontaneous, confident. They have so much talent. There's so much going for them. Stop calling black women aggressive because we don't fit your ideal image of the white woman. Like, please. What areas do you think non-black people are still very uneducated on? This is a very general comment. I'm not sure how to like really respond to this. History is like where a lot of non-black people lack because especially in the UK, because a lot of the education system has tried to erase UK black history from the books and generally gaslighted us for it. But like I said, it varies from pe person to person. So I'm not really sure. So this person is asking if I've had any white friends deal with racist relatives. Um, from what I know of, I don't think so. So sorry, I can't really answer that question because I don't really have that. From what I know of, obviously, I would have to ask my friends, but yeah. This person's also asked, what advice could you give if they shut one down trying to have these conversations with them? I don't know too tough about that because obviously my, my family is all black, so I've never really had that whole racist kind of like, like experience with my family. Um, but the website that I've stated um, does have a lot of information of how you can talk to your family about it. There's even letters that translate into different languages if your family is from a different, like only knows certain languages that are not English. So I would highly check that out. People do know, I would say comment, DM me about it, but like, yeah. That was the last question. This is, this is my perspective on everything as a black woman who has been through racism, who has, who has been to protests, who has been speaking out, etc. Um, obviously a lot of other people within the black community are going to have different stories and different experiences. Um, but yeah, obviously this is my point of view and this is my points and facts that I was able to bring to the table. When I tell you guys, there is so much more to it. There is so much more. I don't want to make this video way too long, but there is so much more. But honestly, if you want to know a lot more, Instagram, follow my Facebook and follow my Snapchat. Like, honestly, I talk about so much on there. I'm already like in general. Yeah. At the end of the day, I'm only one person and I'm only 21. As much as I know a lot, there is still much I still need to educate myself on. Please open up your mind. This is not the time for you to stick by what you've always known. You have to educate yourself. You have to understand this is a much bigger issue that we're dealing with. This issue is not just George Floyd. There are so many other cases. There is Trayvon Martin, there's Eric Gardner in America, and so many other names. There's Sandra Bland. In the UK, there's also Shukri Abdi. There's also Belly. There's also so many other names in the UK that we need to speak about as well. There's just so much more than this George Floyd case. The George Floyd case was just an enough is enough. That was practically it. This is not nothing new. This is not new. This has been going on for years. This has been going on for centuries. This is nothing new. You need to understand that. This is not the time for you to be closed-minded. This is not the time for you to be ignorant. You need to listen to the black people around you and you need to understand their voices need to be heard. And if you're still in that mindset of all lives matter, yeah? You're the type of person that goes to a firefighter who's trying to cool down a house that's on fire and be like, well, what about my house? Why didn't you put water in my house? You sound stupid. You sound stupid. Please fix yourself. This is not the time to be ignorant. Please. This is not the time to be ignorant. I, I, will, I will keep repeating this. Please educate yourself. Please do what you can because this is not the time to be silent. If you want a better life for your black friends, the black people around you, the black community, etc., you need to speak up. You need to do something. You need to educate yourself. Sign petitions. Literally anything. Just please do something. Me and my community are suffering. This is race genocide against black people. This is not the time for you to be quiet. If you have a platform, use it. If you have money, donate it. If you have the time and the confidence to do so, go to protests. Invest money into black owned businesses. Do as much as you can please it all starts with you and pay it forward because the more you pay forward the more you educate the more you spread the word the more people will understand the more people will get involved and we can finally start this revolution that's been needed for time to end systemic racism please
I think that's a good way to end the video. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. Hopefully, I didn't ramble on too much. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below. You know what to do. I would also say follow my social medias as well because I'll be speaking a lot about it. If there's anything you would like to add on or talk about, you can DM me, comment in the comments as well, etc. If someone you know needs educating, I would say show them this video as well because it might help. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.